When interest is paid up front at the beginning of a loan, it is known as paying interest in advance. It is much less common than paying interest at the end of the loan, known as paying in arrears. In this video, we'll be discussing this concept of discount loans, which is this idea that interest is paid up front. With that being said, let's take a look at a scenario. Suppose you are loaned some money, and for simplicity, we'll say that you're loaned $100 and you agree to pay an annual rate of 5% one year from now. So the time is one year. Now normally to calculate this, we use a simple interest model where we say I, which is the amount of interest that you owe, is equal to 100 times the rate as a decimal, 0 0.05, times the time, which is one. And so at the end of the year, you would pay five extra dollars plus the principal. Now this idea of paying up front means that rather than paying $5 at the very end, you pay the $5 right from the beginning. So rather than receiving $100 at day one, you receive 95, which is found by taking 100, take away the interest that you would have paid a year from now. This is what you would receive on the very first day of the loan. And then after one year, you would have to pay back $100. As you can see, this model of paying interest is very different than paying in arrears. This type of loan is known as a discount loan. And so let's take a look at some questions involving discount loans. That way we understand it better. The first question asks, suppose a one-year discount loan with a principal value of $750 is made at a rate of discount of 8%. Now, immediately we know that the interest will be paid up front because we're told that it is a discount loan. The first part asks how much money will be advanced on the loan today and how much must be owed at the end of the year. Let's take a look at what's been given. We've been told that the loan will be for one year. We've also been told that the principal is 750, so I'll mark that down as P, and the rate of discount is 8%. We'll simply call that our interest rate for now. To find out how much will be advanced today and how much must be owed at the end of the year, let's create a quick timeline. At time zero, we'll calculate how much will be advanced today, but we know that within one year time, you will have to pay back $750. To find out this amount, we first have to calculate the interest. So the interest, if we were paying this in arrears, that is a year from now, would be calculated using I is equal to PRT, where our principal is 750, our rate is 0 0.08, and the time frame is one year. Multiplying this out, we would end up with $60. This means that if we were paying it as a regular loan, we would pay $60 a year from now. But since we're paying it in advance, we now take this amount of 60, and we subtract it from P, which is the principal. So I have P take away I, and I'll make this equal to A sub N take away one. A sub N take away one means the amount that you will receive today. N represents the number of periods. In our case, it's a one. So this will be A sub zero. Subtracting 60, away from 750 gives us 690. So that is how much you will receive at the very beginning. That answers the first part. The second part asks, calculate the effective rate of discount. Now, technically we've already been told the rate of discount, so there's no calculation required here. But suppose in a case where you haven't been told the rate of discount, the idea is that the effective rate of discount is a ratio of the cost of the loan, which in our case is $60, divided by, since it's a comparison, to the amount owing after n periods. The amount owing after n periods is 750. We'll call this value D sub n. And if you calculate this out, you'll end up with 0 0.08 which is exactly what was stated in the question. To generalize this formula, it is simply the interest 
that you're expected to pay up front divided by A sub N. And the last part of this question is calculate the effective rate of interest. Now, the effective rate of interest is also a ratio. We'll actually denote it as lowercase i sub n. The effective rate of interest is the ratio of the cost of the loan, that is the amount of interest paid, to the amount received. So if we're denoting this as i sub n, we'll write down i, which is the amount of interest paid, to the amount received. And for us, that was denoted as a sub n take away 1. To input these values, we already know that i is equal to 60. We know that we are being forwarded $690. And if we divide this out using our calculator, as you can see on the screen, you end up with a value that's roughly 0 0.08695. This value and the value here are to be multiplied by 100% to make it into a percentage. It's important to note that the meaning behind this number is the percentage required to increase 690 into 750. Now let's move on to question two. A discounted loan is offered at a rate of discount of 15%. What is the equivalent rate of interest? Now I just want to remind you that the formula that we just derived will be used here. The difference between this question and question number one is that this one is a little more general. They don't tell us how much is being loaned to us, but we are told that it is a rate of discount of 15%. And so let's recall what I represents. I represents PRT. So technically, we can replace the I part of this formula with PRNT. Furthermore, let's talk about A sub N take away 1. Remember what that was. That was the same thing as saying the principal take away the interest. Remember, this is the amount that you're given at the very beginning of the loan with the interest taken away in advance. And if we replace this I with what it really is, which is PRT, we end up with, if we common factor a P, we get 1 take away RT. Let's substitute this into here, and we end up with P bracket 1 take away RT. Notice that the factor P can be canceled out, since it is common at the top and at the bottom. And if this is being done, say, for one year, where t is equal to 1, we can also replace this t and that t with a 1. Now, replacing that t with a 1 doesn't change the top. And replacing that t with a 1 doesn't change this value either. And so we end up with i sub n is equal to r over 1 take away r. That right there is the generic formula that can be used to calculate the effective rate of interest. So substituting 0 0.15 into this R and that R, we get 0 0.15 over 1 take away 0 0.15. Putting this into our calculator, we end up with a value that is roughly, for our effective rate of interest, 0 0.1764. Of course, multiplying this by 100 gives us 17.6%. This calculation tells us that we don't necessarily need a principal value to calculate the effective rate of interest. Thank you for watching, and feel free to use the comment section if you have any questions.